Ashley, let's go to the hotline and let's bring in the head coach of the 5-0 and KD Made Creek Rams. We are joined by Coach Mike Rabe. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I imagine things are going pretty well around your, your neck of the woods right now. We're, we're about to get into our open week, so yeah, we're, we're pretty excited. You guys are 5-0 and for the first time in program history uh, after a really impressive win over Katie Cinco Ranch. And I, I kind of want to ask you a little bit about that game on, on Friday night because you guys are you're taking on a team uh, in Cinco Ranch that, of course, has, has, a, has a great pedigree, a, a, team that I, a program that I know you, you have a lot of respect for down there. Uh, obviously, they are not up to. They're not playing to the standard that they're they're used to right now, and you guys are rolling. But at the same time, sometimes there are teams that you look across and you get scared by the name on the chest. Um, I'm interested, kind of, in what your message was going into Friday night, knowing that look, you guys are probably playing better ball than they are right now, but it's still a team that has a little bit maybe better pedigree than y'all. Uh, you know, I didn't. We didn't really change focus for for anything going into this game. Uh, We've been we've been really hard on our guys about just executing, uh, taking care of their assignment in every game, and, and the games will pan out however they pan out. And yeah, you know, I thought our kids did a good job of going in with that mind frame going into that football game. Uh, meanwhile, you guys jump all over them and, and jump out to to a big early lead uh, against them. I'm interested, kind of, in, in how important you feel like that was uh, in, in a game and in, in obviously a critical district game uh, for y'all. How important was it for you guys to start fast? Yeah, we, we thought it was really big for us. I thought it was, uh, you know, just kind of knock some of the nerves off, get into the first district game, get a get a quick lead, and then you know be able to manage the football game a little bit better with the run game. Yeah, I think it. I think that really helped us. Uh, we're talking with uh, Mike Rabe, head coach of Katie May Creek here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation hashtag TF Today, uh, Coach. It's been a build. Uh, you're there in your fifth season there at, at Maid Creek, and and uh, it's. It has not always been sunshine and daffodils. I'm, I'm interested in, in how you've seen this program change over the course of your time there. Uh, you know, the, the just the buy into the program has gotten better every single year. We this this group of guys that's the seniors for us right now. They were uh, they when they came in as freshmen, they they were good in junior high. They had a good successful season in junior high. They they came to us as freshmen. They had a, a pretty successful freshman year, uh, and then we ended up having to play quite a few of those guys on on varsity. Uh, sophomores and so uh, the class behind them that's juniors right now was also really good ended up going nine and one in district uh, so we knew we had a really good group coming uh, so it's been fun to watch those guys grow we had to put those guys in a lot of spots where they, they probably weren't ready to be varsity football players there's 19 of them on our team that at some point played as sophomores uh, so you know it's they were out there going through the struggles but you could see you could see them getting better each week so it's fun to have a those two groups together right now, being able to compete. Well, and by the way, this is not for those who don't know. This is not the first time you've you've pulled this trick before, where you've taken over a program that was struggling uh, and, and turned them around. You, you did it again at you did it back in Ganado, where you took over a team that was one and nine and really you know down in the dumps and end up taking them to back to back state semifinal appearances. So I, I guess when you're building a program and you're taking over a program that that hasn't had the kind of success that that, that they want. What is that first step? How do you get them moving in the right direction? Because clearly you got the magic touch right now. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any. You know, we just try to stay consistent. You know, with our guys. Uh, you know, we're just we're, we try to be committed to getting better every day. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's any uh, any magic trick to it or anything. I mean, we just we have a vision of what we want it to look like, and we just work towards that every day. And uh, you know, we get kids that that buy into it and they get excited about football and. Uh, you know, things start going our way after a while. So it's, uh, you know, I've got, I've been lucky at, at all those schools to end up putting really good staffs around me uh, of guys that can get kids motivated in different ways. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to be able to do that here right now. We've been able to do that at the last two schools that I was at. So uh, I really don't know. Uh, I've never been in any other situation as a head coach except for those. So I don't really know any other way to do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you you don't know what it's like to walk into a program and be like, oh, yeah, we're just we're ready to win a state championship right now. <laughs> no, you know, I haven't been there before. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about your defense. This has been uh, this unit. I, I feel like has been a revelation for you guys. Last year, defense gives up around thirty-seven points a game. Uh, you know, well, we kind of had a tendency to give up the big play at the wrong time too. Uh, now you guys are rolling right now, and I would say that this is the strength of your team right now on the defensive side. What what has changed? What is what is what is working for you guys defensively this year? Uh, you know, we brought in uh, Coach Johnson, who he was with me when we were at Conley. We brought him in last year and uh you know we went from being an odd front to more of a four-man front and 
and played with that a little bit throughout the year to see what would fit our kids. Uh, you know, with the last maybe three or four football games to go in the season of last year, uh, I thought Coach Johnson had really found out what fit our kids well. Uh, he built on that in the in the spring, and, and they've just been there. They're super bought into it. Uh, that's that coaching staff on the the defensive side of the ball does an outstanding job with the guys they got. They put them in great positions, uh, and so it's just made a made a huge difference. I mean, they they've done an outstanding job of getting those guys playing. Uh, on the other side of the ball. Um... Boy, feels like you could just hand the ball to pretty much anybody. You guys, you had three guys go for more than 100, 130 yards in that one. Uh, I would say that probably, if there is a headliner for your three headed attack, it'd probably be Julius Lafferidge. But but it feels like uh, between him, uh, between Daniel Hury, and between and with Jacoby Wilson, feels like you guys are, are really doing big stuff on the ground. I, I, I'm I'm interested in in how you go about distributing the carries to to three guys who seems like are, are really finding their groove right now. Yeah, it's a uh... You know, they, they don't care who touches it. They just want to be able to move the, the ball. So that makes it, you know, there's no egos on, on that side. We've got wide receivers that, you know, that are really good too that we don't get to use all the time because we got to get the ball to, you know, the ball goes to those guys. But they do a great job of blocking. So it's been, you know, it's just a really good bunch of kids on offense. All those guys have been, uh, besides Lawfridge, all those other guys have all been there uh, with us and they've all been on varsity since they were sophomores, so they understand the scheme. Uh, it's just, it's easy to go in and game plan and, and get those guys in different positions, and it just makes it where it's real fun to coach on the offensive side. Uh, we're talking with Mike Rabin, head coach at Katie Maine Creek here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Day. Um, is the, did, did your – I guess the question I have is – do your kids understand that five and zero is pretty special? Like, is 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 there a different vibe around the program right now? That that because because right now this is something that's never been done in program history. It's it's been. Do you feel like there is a, a new energy around this program right now? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, our kids are excited. I mean, they they know that they're doing well. Uh, you know, they're they're not overly excited where they're not focused on going into this next football game. But but they, you know, they get it and and. It's always way. It feels way better when you win games and you show up to the field house the next day than it does when you lose them. So uh, you know they're, but they're still hungry to get better at football, and that's been that's the exciting thing about coaching them right now. So they're coming in wanting to see what they did wrong last week, and, and even though we did well, they want to get better, and, and they look forward to, to rolling throughout the rest of the district. I'm very careful of, of how I phrase questions like this because it's not a bye week and it's not an off week. It's an open week for you guys. You just don't have a game on Friday, and I know that that there's no there's no rest for you guys. What are you What are you hoping to accomplish in this open week? I, I think it's a good time to get back to some fundamental things and uh, and clean some things up. I, I, we've we've definitely got some aspects that we've got to get better at. Uh, we we're also going to take a you know a big opportunity to work on our special teams. Mm. Uh, you start playing throughout this district, and then the teams are really good in our district. You're going to have to be able to try to win that third phase of the game. So we'll we'll spend a lot of time on that, uh, you know, and get get in the weight room and, and get some of this soreness and bumps out, and and just try to get mentally prepared to go into the next week. We're fortunate that going into our next district game is on a Thursday night, so it it, it kind of shortens down the time that we're off, and we can get back at it again quicker. Uh, you mentioned your district, District 19, uh, 19-6A. You guys are 1-0 in district, uh, but there are still there's still some work to do. I imagine you'll have some pretty close eyes on on this week's Katie versus Tompkins game. But but overall, when you take a look at District 19-6A, uh, obviously there's a team that people may have heard of there, but a lot of other really good teams. I'm interested from your perspective of how you how you view District 19-6A from, from, from where you're sitting. I it's, it's a good district. I mean, it's a it's competitive every week. Uh, you'll see games that are that come down to the last minute and are won by field goals, and it happens. It doesn't matter who's where they are record wise when you get into the thing. I mean, we've been we've been on the lower end of that thing, and we've made a bunch of football games interesting. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so I wouldn't expect it to be any different than that. It's it's always going to be tight, uh, and it, it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be real competitive. Uh, not going to ask you to give away your game plan, but I know you're probably already looking at uh, at some film for Katie Tompkins. Uh, it's your next opponent after your open week. Um, when when you take a look at at, at the unde- undefeated Falcons, uh, what do you see? Well, they're good. I mean, they're they, they don't they make very few mistakes. Uh, they're real sound on defense. They've got good quarterback, good running back. Uh, they got a bunch of wide receivers that can play as well. So uh, they're just a real complete team. Uh, they're they're good. They'll be. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine this is the best team that we've seen so far this year. He is Mike Rabe. He is the head coach of the 5-0 and Katie Made Creek Rams. Coach, congratulations again on, on your fantastic start. Uh, enjoy the open week as much as you can, and best of luck down the road. All right. Thank you. There he goes, Mike Rabe, the head coach.
Katie Maid Creek.